This summer, Bretton Hall College, located halfway between Wakefield and Barnsley, is to close as all its students transfer to the Leeds University, which amalgamated with the college in 2001. Bretton is now better known as the home of the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, but for the past 60 years it was at the forefront of arts education and its alumni include Kay Meller, Mark Gatiss and John Godber, who now takes a final nostalgic look around in Final Curtain. I'm John Godber. I was at Bretton from 1974 to 1978, studying to be a drama teacher. And now I'm director of Holtrick Theatre Company and a playwright. Uh, And here I am, back at Bretton. And I'm just coming up now to... to Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going, lad? I'm going in here. uh, Bretton's closing. I've come to do a tour. Have you got a membership, mate? No, I haven't, no. No, no no. cart. So what's your name? My name's John. Savile John List. John Godber. John Godber. He's not on the list. No, no. no. Sorry, I can't come in. Sorry, what do you do? Well, I'm a playwright. How many times have we heard that one? <laughs> Every week. You write plays. In fact, I wrote a play while I was here at, oh, yeah. at Bretton. Oh, yeah, which one was that? It, it was called Bouncers. I have heard oh, of that one. Oh, oh, yeah. Bouncers. Like that one. It's like what? the story of our lives, isn't it, lads? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, since you've uh, written a play about Bouncers, uh, why don't you come in? All oh, oh, right, oh, right. Well, that's great. Thanks, um, thanks a lot, lads. Have a good night. Have okay. a good night. God bless. Thanks. So, um, here I am coming into Portico. Which, uh, which I, I, I would have done as, a, as an 18-year-old from a comprehensive school in West Yorkshire, training to be a drama teacher. And it was rumoured before you got here that the deputy principal, uh, Daphne Hale, knew everybody's name. Uh, and as I came through the door, she came up to me and she said, Oh, John, welcome. That was very freaky. Um, but Brenton's closing this summer for good as Leeds University move all the students up the road to Leeds. I'm going to take one last look round... Uh, helped by some former students whose voices still echo around these rooms and down these corridors. I can remember coming down the drive to Bretton Hall and I turned around and I said to my mum and my dad, this is where I want to be. There was something just about that wonderful entrance as you come right down towards the mansion building that just it took my breath away. Bretton was a beautiful place to be and uh, obviously it suited an artist because of the ground and the building and the whole history of the place. The moment I went to visit Breton, I just fell in love. You can't not fall in love, because it feels like it will allow you to be. The actual place itself is so exciting because it is so beautiful. And I do think that Breton Hall had something very special about it. Breton was fun. It was funny. It was the vision of one man, Sir Alec Clegg, he had been at the chief officer of the West Riding Education Committee since, I think, '44, and he'd built an extraordinarily able team of people around him. He personified a liberal view of education. Dr Alan Davis was appointed principal in 1968. You know, the war years had been very dull and flat, and there was felt to be the need to revivify the curriculum, and more teachers of the arts were required. And Alec thought, well, this is quite a good idea. The first idea, I think, was a college for music teachers. But the local committee here quite rightly thought that was a bit narrow. Somebody suggested throwing in a few painters. (laughs) And in the end, they agreed to have a college for art, music and drama. And Alec and the West Riding, I think, negotiated a figure of £49,000 for 260 acres of Capability Brown landscape on this magnificent, but by then very battered, Old building. I'm Iris Brook. I was at Breton between 1952 and 1954 as a music student. Sir Alec Clegg believed that we started from the child and moved outwards. And I think that whole feeling that he had and the importance he placed on having a creative place like Breton enabled thousands and thousands of children to benefit from that. So this is up from Portico towards uh, Pillar Hall with its terrific lantern-domed, uh, wonderfully impressive. And, and then through, it, through here on this left-hand side as we go through, this was the student common room through here. And, and just to give you a sense of, you know, I'm looking, looking right, kind of due south now across... The cricket pitch uh, just off to our, our right, and then a rugby pitch further right still, and down across the lake. You know, a fantastic uh, vista. 
There was a formal dinner that, that was very splendid and there was a specially written grace that was written during the day and rehearsed at five o'clock and performed at six o'clock and never seen again and all of those things were just absolutely wonderful. I'm Tony Kremlisk and I uh, studied music at Breton from 1956 to 1958. For my 21st birthday, I got a present of a second-hand Grundig tape recording, and I tried to make a, as many recordings as I as I could of activities. After full meal the evening, we used to gather together on the top landing. The boys on one side, the girls on the other side, drank cocoa, played chess, and did singing and scat singing, and I generally had a good social time. My name is Peter Collis. I was a student here at Breton from 1967 to 71, probably four of the, the happiest years of my life up to that point. It was, it was quite strict in some ways. Um, lectures were compulsory, except that if you felt the need to walk around the lake to refresh yourself spiritually, you were allowed to do that. So there were quite a lot of us <laughs> that went for walks around the lake. <laughs> This part of Breton is a maze of corridors, uh, which are now professors' uh, offices and one thing and another. When I was here, they were rooms, and, and this here is the room I first came to uh, in 1974. Uh, and I, I, I think these guys are actually uh, rehearsing a, a play that I wrote about Breton um, in, um, I think, the late 90s. And feel the breath going right through you. And let it drift away from you. Come out of your freeze very slowly. And feel what sound you are. Well, it's fascinating just uh, hearing that. Especially in this room, because um, you know, we had to do dance uh, or movement. I didn't feel particularly comfortable uh, at all coming into uh, Coming to that kind of thing, and how I got into this drama thing uh, is bizarre. Um, and I can remember just looking out the window here, uh, I, crikey, uh, just, just come to me now, and seeing my, my mum and dad drive off, you know, and I'd never been away from home. Uh, and just uh, the, the gulp in your, in your throat, and to be absolutely honest. I'm Robert Warby, and I studied music at Bretton Hall between 1973 and 1976. I'm now a composer and a sound artist. I present Here and Now on BBC Radio 3. My name's Dr Irene Bishop and I was at Breton from 1967 to 70. I'm a head teacher of St Saviour's and St Olive's School, which is a comprehensive school in inner city London. My name's David Newland. I was at Breton from 1984 to 1987 doing drama and dance. I then did two years as student union president and I'm now the regional director for South Wales for the Arts Council of Wales. I'm Kate Rowland and I was at Breton from 1973 to 1976 and I studied drama with art subsid. And now I'm the creative director of new writing at the BBC, which means I champion writer talent across radio, television and film. I'm Andrew Barnabas and I studied popular music studies at Breton between 1992 and 95. I'm now one half of a composing duo, writing scores for film games and TV. I'm Peter Harrop. I studied drama at Breton Hall from 1973 to 77. I'm currently the Dean of the School of Arts and Media at the University of Chester. I'm Evelyn Jameson. Uh, I was at Breton studying the BA Creative Arts from 1980 to 1983 and I'm now Head of Dance at the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. My name is Andrew Dunn. I was at Breton Hall between 1976 and 1979. I was doing a teaching degree in drama, and since then I went on and became an actor. I was in Dinner Ladies with Victoria Wood. Uh, I've done Brenda Bird and Fortune, and now I'm about to go back into Coronation Street as Roger the Plumber. <laughs> I think, you know, there are Brenton gr graduates all over the place, and, and they crop up. I mean, I've just discovered that my daughter's English teacher is a, is a Brenton graduate, and there was, you know, there, there are some people who, who, who you remember very, very strongly, even though you didn't meet them. I, I was very, very fortunate to listen to uh, Sir Ken Robinson, I don't know, perhaps 17 years ago. Without question, the best speaker I, I've ever heard talking about drama and the arts and everything that Brenton stood for. 
I'm Sir Ken Robinson. I was at Breton between 1968 and 1972. And I was studying English and drama. And now I live in Los Angeles. For me, there's, there's no question that Breton has shaped my life. Uh, it exposed me to ideas in the arts and in education, which I hadn't thought about before, but which I've thought about a lot since, and helped, I hope, to promote a lot since. If you want ideas to flourish and talents to prosper, you create conditions in which people can try ideas out, who can uh, test the range of their own abilities and creativity. And you don't do that by you know, a kind of bloodless regime of standardised testing. But Breton was exceptional. It was exceptional in the UK and, I think, in Europe more generally because it was a college that was dedicated to a certain type of education, you know, to, it's a malign term now, but to a view of progressive education, one that's centred on developing the individual, on liberal education. Well, my name is Colin Williams, actually. My stage name's Colin Welland. I was at Breton from uh, 54 to 56, I think. Um, I studied art, art and pottery. Everybody was creative, and we were encouraged to be creative. We were encouraged to stimulate kids. The idea was to stimulate them to express themselves, encourage it, encourage them to be vagabonds. And this was terrific, you know, it was t completely new. We weren't teaching how to draw and paint, we were teaching kids to have the opportunity to use paint and clay and drawing to express themselves, whether they could draw or not, to let themselves go on paper and in clay. And, of course, the drama students were the same. They weren't training actors, they were training kids to express themselves through drama and music. And consequently, it was a terrifically stimulating place to be. So we're walking down now into what is and was the drama department uh, on our left at the Experimental Theatre, where uh, my first efforts were received reasonably well. This is, this is now a, a, a studio space. Across the hall there was a, uh, a room which became the, um, the wardrobe. In front of a stable block, there's a, there's a square of grass some people would be singing, there'd be somebody with a guitar sat playing a guitar, there'd be somebody juggling, there'd be somebody trying to stand on their head. Beyond that, if you can imagine outside there, there's a, an open-air theatre where Greek plays and Roman plays and, and more, more famously the, uh, the mystery plays. Uh, but there have been some pretty uh, significant players through all these spaces. I'm Malcolm Storey and I was at Breton 1966 to 1969 and I studied drama. And I'm playing Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, the musical. For me, there are no key figures at Breton. Um, Breton is the key figure. And um, everyone who was there um, is a key figure uh, um, in my mind. We did plays through the centuries um, in different garbs in the grounds of Breton. And it literally was, over a period of three years, it was an attempt to start um, with the Greeks, work through the medievals, and um, come straight up front to where we were at that time in the 60s. What was special about Breton as well was the drama tutor there, John Hodgson. I'm Jenny Tarran. I was at Breton Hall from 1965 to 1968, uh, studying drama. And I'm an actress. The cycle of Wakefield mystery plays were done at Breton at regular intervals. And that was terrific because the whole college was involved, every department, and we managed to incorporate every part of the rooftops of the clock tower and the main hall uh, going up to the music block as part of the setting of, of the backdrop for the plays. Hell was in the basement of the gym. Heaven was, of course, on the top of the roof. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Stood here on the stage of the open air theatre and perhaps uh, 70 foot away at the music school and a uh, significant player in the, the whole of the college. There'd be people in rooms playing trombones or violins or sat at the piano. Uh, and it really was a fantastic hive of activity. Uh, and there was the music department who, uh, you know, at, along with the drama department, for me, felt that they got reputations above and beyond the college. I'm sure the art department did, but it, it, wasn't, it, it didn't come through to me at that time. 
Ironically, of course, now Britain's known more for the sculpture park than, than its drama and its, and its music. My name's Cathy Warren. When I was at Breton, I was Cathy Mackey. Uh, I was there from 1971 to 1972. In the spring of 1972, there were a lot of big power strikes. So actually, Breton Hall took the most unusual, and I would imagine unprecedented step, of sending home for a whole term all the students except the third years and the postgraduate students, which meant that a very small number of us had the run of the whole place for three months and all the staff at our disposal. We were offered the chance to spend the whole of a Wednesday running what was called Integrated Arts Day. We could use any facilities in college. I worked on that alongside art, music and dance students and we developed projects and brought children into college to take part in enormous 3D games and costumed happenings of all sorts. Well, we had been entirely devoted to teacher training. However, we were told we had to reduce the number of teachers, they weren't needed, and uh, we introduced the VAs. We started in a modest way and then built up and it continued to build after my time. My name is Martin Kishko. I was at Breton Hall College from 1976 to 1979. For the last nearly 30 years I've been working as a composer, composing music for film and TV. I was part of the first intake that uh, were on this new degree, Creative Arts, and one of the modules was InterArts, and so this was a combination, the interaction of dance and film and writing and music and, and the visual arts. I suppose what I enjoyed most about that course was the, the ability for experimentation. And I remember that we had one tutor, Dave Lambert, who I don't think ever said no over the three years that I was there. I think he always said, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. My name is David Lambert. I was uh, working at Breton Hall from 1971 until 1990, and I'm now teaching for VSO in Mongolia. I was working on the Inter-Arts course. It was a fantastic course to teach on, and in many ways it embodied the original spirit and tradition of Breton in which students worked collectively. The students we had were absolutely amazing. We didn't really have to teach them, we just pointed them in a direction and gave them a few stimuli and such like, and they would be off doing the most amazing creative things. Uh, my name is Steve Pemberton. I was at Breton between 1986 and 1989. Uh, I'm Mark Gatiss. I was at Breton Hall between 1986 and 1989 doing theatre arts. We are. We are part of the, half of the League of Gentlemen. I mean, one of the things, one of the most enjoyable things we had to do as an exercise was to take a play, and it was Strindberg or it was Akeborn, whatever it was, and come up with a scene between two of the written scenes, i.e. come up with your own scene. And I think you volunteered for Way Upstream, the Alan Akeborn. I remember thinking, why? And of course, it's brilliant because you can just, it's a domestic comedy. Yeah. And they just wrote this very, very funny thing with some pompous people playing Trivial Pursuit, whereas we'd been given Strindberg's The Father and saved Edward Bond so oh god so grim it's a funny oh, we were crying uh, because of a brilliant scene where oh one of the actresses god. were putting her lipstick on in a pretend mirror you know facing the audience and she, ah. of course she didn't have a real mirror there so she had no idea where she was going it was all over her face <laughs> it was all over it did a tease oh, up the nose god. and we were crying with laughter but a lot of the times we could find laughter everywhere and you know doing those kind of uh, Strindberg and, and Edward Bond and, and the, the Brecht and the, the Shakespeare yeah. We had this thing called the Breton Magnet where, you know, Breton Hall <laughs> campus is sort of, down, not in a valley, but it's quite low. You have to walk up a hill to get out and, you know, to get to the bus stop. And it's like something doesn't want you to leave, you know, mm. is pulling you You'll back. You'll never and, leave. And so we'd often sit there thinking, oh, I wish I could go to Wakefield, but I just can't be bothered. You know, the Breton Magnet is keeping me here. The isolation of it almost, almost kind of gave it this slightly monastic feel to it in the fact that it, it wasn't monastic in any shape or form but that's the nearest word I can think of it gave you this feeling that you should be working that you, it was all about the work that it was all about the stuff that you were doing the comedian and writer Mark Thomas because this place was small you had this feeling of familiarity and comfort but also the fact that you could argue you know you knew everyone there you, you know and sometimes that's a really bad thing but sometimes it's really great to be part of that family that could argue and discuss and debate and fall out and all of that 
I think I became sort of politicised through a mixture of the art that I studied and being in Yorkshire at the time of the miners' strike. Um, actually, you know, looking back on it, it was the best place I could ever have gone to. I, I would not be doing what I'm doing now without it. I just wouldn't. I had a dream the other night. Lowlands, lowlands away. My the fact that the village, what village there was, which I think was a shop, it was dry. There was certainly no pub in the village of Breton then, and that was a good mile up the drive. We were terribly self-contained and very supportive of each other. You know, we had Kennel Block, which was where the uh, the bar was, and the folk club was run from Kennel Block. So that was your entertainment spot, more or less. During my time, there was between four and five hundred students there. I would think they were your total community. So everything, experiences perhaps were heightened or intensified because of the closeness with which this this community in which it found itself and. I didn't realise how special it was at the time, and it was only subsequently, because I've never lived, you know, I've never found myself again in such wonderful surroundings. So we've come up the hill from the drama department to uh, what is now, I suppose, the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, and, and, and for me, the, the hub of my college life, which was KB, Kennel Block, or, uh, or the College Bar, if you like. Our particular year is to set things up where we'd do musicals in the bar and everybody would be singing along and um, <laughs> maybe we need locking up. But it was, a, yeah, it was a fantastic time. My name's Sean Prendergast. I was at Bretton Hall between 1977 and 1980 and now I'm an actor and screenwriter. Bretton, because it was this extraordinary fantasy island, so it had an incredible social life and it had this very macho, uh, uh, environment. I, I found it so, and I was a big rough lad from North Shields, but I found it incredibly, you know, I mean, the, there was a heavy drinking culture amongst the students, there was a, a sort of a rugby playing, you know, even the, even the Morris, even the Morris dancers were butch, even the Morris dancers were scary. If there was a style that came from Breton, it was a, quite a physical style, quite a big upfront, physical, confident style of acting and style of theatre which you can still see the legacy of today in, in lots of people. But by the same token, there's also a northern sensibility, which you can see in the work of someone like Kay Mellor. She was a Breton student as well. I'm Susan Daniels, head of the School of Performance and Cultural Industries, the last school of the university left on the Breton campus and due to relocate to Leeds this summer. What's the relationship now between Leeds University and, and Breton? And when the Breton Hall College merged with the university in 2001... There was a very detailed examination by the university about the possibility of using the Breton campus as a Leeds arts-based campus. However, there were a number of problems. One was um, a reduction by the government in undergraduate numbers and economic pressure. The other was the actual pressure of being part of the university and providing the sorts of facilities that students expect from libraries to sports facilities to actually meeting students from other courses. However... The other problem for our school was that we need a theatre, a public licensed theatre, and the Leeds campus did not have a public licensed theatre, the sort and type that we wanted and needed for our teaching and research. So the university had to do another examination of whether it wished to invest that money in a new building to the cutting edge standard that we wanted, and it decided that it did, so that we were faced with a very exciting opportunity, and that was to relocate to Leeds in a new building, and that's what we should be doing this summer. So from your point of view, it, had they said they you know, wouldn't have, for example, footed the bill for a performance licence, then the whole ship could have sank. From our point of view, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So you see it as a, as a win, essentially. Absolutely. I think it's very sad, uh, the Bretons closing. I, yeah, I know the economics of, of, of the college have changed a lot and uh, its relationship now with the university. Um, but I think in a broader sense, it's a victim of climate change. I mean that, you know, Breton Hall flourished uh, within a certain view of, uh, of education and of the role particularly of the arts in education. And it became a beacon for that way of thinking about education. And it's a, it's a way of thinking that's become increasingly besieged over the past 30 or 40 years as, as these rather utilitarian pressures have come to bear on not just schools but on 
universities and colleges more generally. What I want to cling to, though, is, is that what Breton stood for is still very important, and its spirit should live on, even if the building closes. I was um, really upset, actually, strangely upset, because I, what, what Breton Hall offered people was as much about you know, doing a, a, a Greek drama at 6 o'clock in the morning in the middle of the woods. Right? Does this have any quantifiable... Uh, worth in terms of education. Could you write it down in a box and say, yes, they have been given X amount of education? No, it's the experience of doing it that actually makes it important. We laughed, I think. Uh, (laughs) It's the truthful, because it just brought back so many memories. It's a sad thing, your kind of old college closing, but it was... It's always produced mixed emotions and still does. I think. But I'd say this, you know, we certainly wouldn't be where we are no. now had we not been to Breton. A, because we would never have met each other, but B, because we would have had a totally different three years learning experience. And I think, you know, we could have ended up wanting to write but never really knowing that we could. And I think, you know, that's the main thing we, we got out of going to Breton Hall. I think I was devastated. Angry and unsurprised. Very sad, very sad. Betrayed. A bit sad. Devastated. Very, very sad. Absolutely disgraceful. It upset me, I wanted to cry, actually. I immediately felt a little bit of myself had been ripped out. Shock. Because you could have all the courses in the world and all the resources in the world, but you can't have it there. But the really selfish part of me was thinking, no one else, kids of my age, in the future, we'll be able to experience that. And that is... Someone should be able to experience that. That was wonderful. And, and I'm afraid that you'll never get that again. So we're making our way now out back um, from Portico, where we, where we came in, to the front of Mansion. And... Uh, you can't help but be touched by it. I think anybody would. You know, your, your former college, a place where you, you perhaps had the best four years of your life. And one only hopes that the Breton ethos gets a chance to be heard at Leeds University and that the spirit of Breton can pervade that campus. Notwithstanding that, there is clearly, as anyone would think, there's great sadness in what this you know, fantastic location might become. Let's hope somebody with some inspiration and some insight picks up the baton and... Uh, and kind of uses it and, and takes the Breton spirit forward in this location, notwithstanding whatever might happen at Leeds. I think, you know, good luck to both ventures. Final Curtain was presented by the playwright John Godber and featured archive material recorded in the 1950s by Tony Krimlisk and in the 1960s by Holy Ground Records. It was produced by another Breton Hall graduate, Andy Cartwright, as a soundscape production for BBC Radio 4.